Hello folks, welcome back to the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom, and you're watching the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show here on YouTube. Um, last week, because in honor of my two years here on YouTube, you saw the old bump, old opening bump I used. Yep, those days are over with though. I don't know, she wanted me to leave a house, a job. And move with her in the middle of nowhere. And have a kid and have three people living in a 500 square foot apartment with a cat and only one person working. So things did not exactly work out, but you live and learn, you move on. And talking about live, living and learning, talking about live, live dead, baby. Lives dead. Let's talk about some elimination chamber. I'll tell you what, I was kind of shocked. There were parts of the elimination chamber. I'm taking a look at the few notes I have. That were really good. Some parts were terrible. And some parts were just, and, and the terrible, not so much the wrestling, but just, just boring. Let's get started with the pre-show. There was a pre-show she pre-show match. Knew that would happen. It's just a matter of time. And there was one unannounced match too. So the pre-show was the Viking Raiders. They took on Hawkins. Oh wait, I got my bonus in. That's awesome. So the Viking Raiders taking on Kurt Hawkins and Zach Ryder. Uh, Ryder tried. Kurt Hawkins. Didn't try as, as hard. Um, this took up the last, I think, couple of minutes of the pre-show. I want to say it was like within the last 15 minutes. I honestly think it was like the last 10 minutes. So, yeah, that makes sense. Between wrestlers entrances and actually having the match exits. Yeah, the, yeah, the last 10 minutes of the match. Uh, Viking Raiders. The squash doesn't matter. Uh, it might as well, if it wasn't a squash, if, if you don't think it was a squash, it was a darn near squash. Uh, because Zack Ryder did get some, some, some moves in. He tried, but not happening. Uh, this match on the pre show, it's good to see these guys on pay per view. It's a can of soup, though. I mean, Viking Raiders obviously won. But that was it. Uh, most of the pre-show was just they're hyping up stuff. These pre-shows are getting long. I mean, they show at least 45 minutes of just kind of like random interviews. And kind of it, it hypes up the event more, more than they did during the actual shows of the week, which is terrible. But, so let's see here. Yeah, our truth was there. He was talking a bunch. I don't know. I don't pay attention half to the, half to the shows. But you know what? And Shane. Oh, wow. I got. That was the Stone Cold Law. That was the snooze. Oh, wow. Wow, now. I, I think I'm going to upgrade myself. So I only got two wrong. But elimination, I was close. But, well, let's go through the show. So, again, we just heard about the Viking Raiders just, just near squashing. Uh, the Long Island connection of Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. But next we have... Here, no, not that. Did take notes here. There we go. Andrade, Cian Almas, Zelina Vega, and oh my my, Zelina Vega, them outfits, she got that from J Lo, from Jennifer Lopez, because that split went all the way down past her belly button. Who's Zelina Vega? But she's a married woman, so I can't be saying that. But I don't know, we'll see. 
Oh, and then, oh, wait, it wasn't this. What am I saying? I knew my notes were all. Up. It was actually to open up the mat, open up the card proper, was Drew Gulak taking on Daniel Bryan. Oh, that's why. I just put it down there. Uh, this was a fun match. It's a very technical match. I'll get into Zena Vega that match. But right now, this match is very technical. This was a great catch as catch Ken match. This was actually really fun to watch. Really good technical match. In fact, I'm going to upgrade this match, I think. Uh, Drew Gulak and Daniel Bryan really mirroring each other wrestling-wise. Whenever one would do something, the other would counter and, and do the same thing. Uh, one example, Daniel Bryan was going for the Mexican surfboard. Drew Gulak figured out how to counter the Mexican surfboard by Daniel Bryan and then apply the Mexican surfboard onto Daniel Bryan. I like that. I haven't seen that in a while. That's good. I mean, again, he would... They kind of married each other, which was pretty fun. Again, you have the Mexican surfboard spot, and a lot of counter-wrestling. Oh, and then Drew Gulak got vicious. Uh, Daniel Bryan tried to put the yes lock in at one time, or, or the labelle lock, and he just started to drop hammer fists. <laughs> Poor Daniel Bryan. Um... Again, the, the false finish, that German suplex. Ouch, that hurt. The um, snap suplex by Daniel Bryan. And the yes case, they, he kind of countered everything, which was really smart. Then he got locked into the LaBelle lock a second time. Except for this time, like Daniel Bryan really locked in. Especially that arm was in like a corner lock. And Drew Gulak did not tap. He did the face thing. Indeed. And passed out. So Daniel Bryan wins. Yes, 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 yes. I'll tell you what, this is a fun match. They have to continue this to WrestleMania somehow. This, folks, was a surf and turf match. Now it's time to talk about Selena Vega. Or, I mean, Tranquilo. Let's talk about Andrade! Dean Almas. Uh, taking on Umberto Carrillo. This is the best match I've seen these two put on, period. Um, so and Andrade starts off very hard-hitting. Very aggressive. Very Los Ingobernales de Japón style from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh, wow. New Japan Andrade is awesome. Los, the leader of Los Ingrobinoles. It's so increíble. That's probably the extent of my Spanish. Next to Triangular de la Muerta. The death triangle. Or the triangle of death. Triangle of the death. I think. Who knows how they... I think this, that's a literal meaning. I don't know. Whatever. Cerro Miedo says, I just figure out. He says it's on TV. Talks over the death triangle. I know what muerte means. Triangular. Well, that sounds like triangle. So it can't be that bad. Good thing to learn. I know some geometry. Now I know some geometry in Spanish too. That's pretty cool. So again, this was again a pretty hardening match. Um, oh, the 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 ability, the natural ability of Alberto Carrero, Carrero. Oh, he's so good. Uh, Andrade, yeah, he goes. To, he targets the arm after he caught Alberto with that arm breaker. He just t takes that shoulder and breaks it over his shoulder. A pump handle arm, standing pump handle arm breaker, because that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, again, he grounds. He grounds the high flyer. Smart wrestling. Uh, let's see what else is there. <laughs> then, then we saw a little bit of the party Andrade, too. Are we going to see this as hubris going to catch up to Andrade one day? That would be really good. Because, again, he did Tranquilo. 
you know, to celebrate a little bit in the ring. Of course, you could hear Zelina Vega in, in her Jennifer Lopez cut bodysuit, which probably again, she just has to step in the middle and just pulls it right over each half. Right there. Yeah, one day she's gonna have, she's gonna have the most spectacular wardrobe failure ever. And I'm gonna be there to see it. Even better than the thank you, Lana moment we saw with Charlotte Flair. Yes, if you don't remember that, uh, very quickly Lana was going to do it was a sunset flip into a pin. So she pulled down Charlotte Flair, showing off all of Charlotte Flair. Yep. And of course, they did not face the crowd, but you hear the, the people away. You can see this like, Thank you, Lana. They had a smile on their face. One day, something good like that will happen to this hobo. I miss so much fun stuff. Um, I missed, I think, when people were doing nude protests in New York. That was funny. It was cold too, so it was not going to go well. Uh, with this, so by this point, Umberto's he on the outside of the ring. He literally skips back into the ring, beats the ten count, and like Larry, he beats the ten count at like literally like nine point five. So it was like right there on the edge of being 10. But nope, he did that. And then so many forms. They just wanted to trade forms. And oh, oh, those, those the Latino men. They know how to deliver chops to the chest. Because whoo, that chop and dry delivered. You heard that throughout the entire ring. Umberto did a Frankensteiner from the top. That was also fun to see the Frankensteiner move. I call it the Frankensteiner. Scott Steiner developed that. He called it the Frankensteiner. Scott Steiner still number one in my book because of Steiner. It's probably number 66 and thirds, probably. Or 100. No, he's he's 143 and a third in my book. Steiner math. Uh, then he. Again, Andrade eventually control. You want to do the hemlock DDT on the exposed floor. No, that wasn't going to happen. Umberto backflipped him. Then he started. He, then he tried La Mejistra, which is again the classic wrestling rolling pin, which actually used to, actually used to use, used to win people over. Uh, then what else? And they started a reversal. Uh, victory rolls, um, and Andrade wins because he has a handful of tights. So Andrade wins. He retains his belt. I'll tell you what, this was an amazing match, though. I don't know. I put something, something like, I don't know, whatever. But this, folks, was a surf and turf and match. So right this hour at the show, you have two amazing matches, and I'll tell you what, Ashley gets better from there, because then we had our tag team elimination match. I'm like, uh oh, so they're gonna start lowering that cage. You have to set that. It's time to make breakfast. So again, the team involved in the elimination chamber match. You have Miz and Morrison, Rude and Ziggler, Heavy Machinery, Lucia House Party, The New Day and Usos. I actually start off, which was pretty pretty impressive. Again, the Miz and Morrison comes out to the slow mo pyro. Such a thing of beauty. So with this match, it starts off. I took a lot of notes on this match. It starts as a brawl between the Usos and New Day. They have such history together. Uh, Big E hits the belly to belly. Eats. He also, he also eats and has the uh, flip spot. Uh, Kofi, Kofi was kind of off a little bit. Um, he tried to do stuff off the top rope. Not so much, though. There was some weird little botchy thing. 
He saved it, but the ropes were not kind to Kofi Kingston this night. And that could be anything. In Philadelphia, those ropes do weird things. AJ Styles had problems using the lucha ropes. Kofi has problems using the ropes. Here in Daytona, the ropes actually get humid and really slick. Um, you'd be surprised to know how many men, I guess how many ladies, have actually crotched themselves trying to use the top rope here in Daytona Beach. Only because it gets so humid, there's condensation forming, it's liquid. And I think after every match, the ref actually has to drive the top rope off. Never a good thing. The safety issue, that's an OSHA concern. And then Lucha House Party comes in next. And oh, Lucha. Lucha, 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 Lucha. Fly, Lucha House Party fly, because that's what they do the best. I'll tell you what, if you thought the, mass, the match was fast beforehand, no, this actually picked up a couple gears. They're so fast, this Lucha House Party. They did the triple moonsault. That was so fun. Uh, Kofi. He just kind of fell into Lucha House Party. Then they started to climb up top on the cage. They started to climb up top of the pods. You're like, oh, please don't die. You know something fun's going to happen. And then a hockey fight starts off on, on top of one of the pods. You're like, oh, my God. I've never seen that before. They were really creative. Considering this is an Elimination Chamber match, I'm actually really impressed with what they did. I'm going to upgrade this, too. No, because it really wasn't a flame match, but it's right up there, though. And the Miz and Morrison, they enter. They just start, and they just start running everyone into the cage, which is smart. They're going to use the elimination chamber just like a weapon. They hook Grand Metalik, Grand Metalik into the Tree of Woe, start doing the yes kicks. Finish up with the that flying spin kick Morrison does. Uh, Grand Man League, the Huracron from the top of the pod to the ground. That was amazing. Or not to the ground, but amazing. Uh, Kofi, he does some like backdrop off the pod. I don't even know how they have a major. When he used to go up there on top of the pods, because that's even taller than the top rope. Then heavy machinery comes in. Oh, they just shoulder tackle everyone. Heavy Otis and Tucker Knight are so great. They do a uh, double axe handle smash by Big E. Of course, very classic. And everyone in the ring. And that ring's actually getting pretty crowded. Lindsay does a moonsault. Somehow from the, he like, shimmied up the ring and somehow got, like, on top hanging in, like, a monkey bar position. Did, like, some weird flippy thing and did a moonsault onto everyone except for Heavy Machinery. That was awesome. And uh, Lucha House Party actually gets eliminated first. And I'm surprised because then Dolph and... Rude actually make their entrance next. So actually, for the most part, the ring was actually really full, which is good and bad because it makes it a cluster in the ring until you see people climbing on pods. So they kind of expand the size of the ring. So it makes it more believable. Uh, Dolph. I mean, he, he, he goes to work over Otis. And then Tucker, he starts like climbing. He just climbs up. The, the chain, which is amazing to see. And then Otis. Oh, Otis just just died because Otis wants to go spear Dolph. But no, instead of spearing Dolph through the chamber, he actually went through the chamber onto the floor. That was it for Otis. Uh, Tucker Knight's obviously pissed off. He starts hammering both Rude. And Ziggler, however, Tucker is the only one in. Yep, so then they eventually double team on him, and Tucker Knight gets eliminated. Heavy, mach heavy machinery's out. People are sad. Boo! It's often rude, and for the most part, get eliminated pretty quickly afterwards. 
uh, after the big ending. And they get the na 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 hey, goodbye. Na 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 hey, goodbye. In the Philadelphia crowd, it can be so vicious sometimes. Dirty, drunk, disgusting Philly fans. Well, they're always dirty, drunk, disgusting Philly fans. Never get that wrong. Then it was then they uh, the the two teams left was the Usos and New Day, and they started to beat up the Miz and Morrison. It was a pop up slow and drop, which looked amazing. That could be a finisher anywhere else. A New Day eventually get eliminated after a Kofi miscue. Uh, even the Miz tried to fly a little bit. Miz, 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 Miz. Uh, the USO starts a super kick party. But eventually, John Morrison hits the Starship paint. Still one of the best top rope moves ever. And, well, before that, the Miz did the... The uh, skull crushing finalities into one of the issue Usos. Uh, he didn't get the pin, but transitioned directly from there into the figure four. Starship pin then followed, and then a double dirty pin. Whoa, that's creative. And Morrison holding the legs and kind of like the alligator clutch, and, and the Miz sitting on top of the top rope, his feet on the top rope, and also holding one of the Usos down. I forget which one. I can't tell. But the Miz and Morrison retain their title. Title. I'll tell you what. This was a fun, amazing match. This is a surf and turf match. And we have AJ Sausick on Alistair Black. Uh, this was a really kind of slow plotting match. A very New Japan AJS match. It takes a long time. Uh, by this point. I think you're watching a good two hours of wrestling. End of this match. Yeah, it's about two hours. I think about it. Good two hours of wrestling at this point. It's like, okay, let's let's try and pick up the pace, but they don't. Um, AJ Styles is leg kicks, leg kick. Uh, Alistair Black counters, and he strikes legs. AJ Styles. And then again, for the most part, they just go after each other's legs. AJ does the whole, whole knee lock, which looks kind of vicious. Um, Anderson and Gallows do make their presence felt every so often. They would distract Alistair Black. Then again, AJ can kick the heck out of Alistair Black and. He also, uh, AJ Smart, he goes, wait, I'm on the ropes. Break, break, break. It was a Yano. He learned that from New Japan Pro Wrestling, definitely. Because eventually he got the calf crusher locked in. He started to really wrench on it for a while. And Alistair Black, eventually he he gets out of the lock because he grabs a hold of the kendo stick. Because, yeah, why are there kendo sticks under the wrestling rings? I understand his tables and I understand chairs. And unfortunately, AJ heats them all. Uh, so there's a kendo stick because AJ did 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 whack. Alistair back a couple times with it. Uh, AJ uh, with a stick on the ground, he takes it, just kind of like starts to put it. I think what he wanted to do was put it over AJ's neck so he could choke him with it. It kind of hit him in his jaw. Still pretty uncomfortable if you have this nasty piece of wood on your face. So I understand why AJ would break that. Then AJ tried to do the tombstone pile driver one handed. Yeah. yeah, but that wasn't wasn't gonna happen though. Then AJ went all was all oh he can sell so good. Again, the meteor through the table was awesome. Then the OC just jumped Alistair Black because this was a no DQ match. I don't know why they didn't start earlier. Hit the magic killer on him, but then gong. Gong. Undertaker mysteriously appears. 
from the ring and and choke slams AJ again. AJ's that's that's his that's his kryptonite. Uh, Undertaker beats he also double choke slams the club, choke slams AJ. Then of course the lights go down again. Alistair Black's there. Will Alistair Black get the powers of darkness? Hmm. Well, you shall see. Hits the black mass on AJ Styles. Alistair Black wins. This is a kind of plotting match. They could have done more to keep the action up. Still, it was a cheeseburger match. Kind of hard to complain about any AJ Styles match. If this is the slowest match he's had in a while, he is getting up there in age, and I guess they said, okay, we still have hours to fill in. So let's keep this going. Then the next match was the Street Profits taking on Seth Rollins and Murphy. Oh, this is kind of fun. Murphy, and then he, he has to realize he's too small to shoulder tackle anyone, though. And then the crowd saying, we want, we want the smoke. Ooh, I got to hurry up. I have to hobo still. How much more is left? Oh, that's it? Oh, that's, I'll get this. I'll, I'll get this done. I will get this done eventually. Eventually, even if I, as I rip stuff out of my ear and stuff. Hopefully, I won't have the technical issues. For some reason, last year I did, it started to fade to black. But we'll see what happens with this. The Three Prophets taking on Seth and Murphy. Uh, Murphy, again, he's just to recap, he's too small to shoulder tackle anyone. Three Prophets, again, they do the classic double axe handles. Double axe handle shot. And that's why, because I need it on this side. Whoop. That's actually is better. Move this over there. Oh, yeah. Black. Black is good sometimes. Uh, again, they did the classic double axe handle onto the arm. Very classic move. I've seen that, I think, in every tag team match across every promotion. Ah, right to the opponent's. Stretch arms. And then Ford starts to fly a little bit, and he should learn he should not fly so early in the match. Because. Oh, he flies up too. He does. While well, Rollins starts to run the ropes, Ford starts doing flippy stuff, which is pretty, pretty cool. He does a double drop kick. And both Seth and Murph land outside the ring. For the most part, Street Profits, for the mo uh, majority of it, we're actually in control. Uh, Ford, he has that amazing spike DDT. That just looks vicious. But then he gets to the outside, and that's not where he wants to be because the author's a painter there. And they start to beat them up until the Viking Raiders show up and run them off. That do something, I guess. And there was a super kick party by both Seth Rollins and Murphy. There was a tower doom spot. Murphy definitely ate the worst of that. Then Kevin Owens comes down out of the crowd. This popcorn starts to sit on the table. Throws some popcorn at Rollins. Distracts him enough. Uh, Murphy eventually gets double power bombed into the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Kachoo, kachoo. Yep, it can't be. You know, it's a hobo show if I sing the barricade song. And then eventually, yep, Kevin Owens says it's not, this is enough of a distraction where the Street Profits actually make a win. Because again, they do their kind of double team stuff. On to poor Murphy. Murphy, of course, eats the, eats the pin. Seth is then upset at Murphy. KO comes in, stunners Seth, throws some popcorn on Murphy as he leaves. Hmm. That was a fun match. It was, it was a really good raw match. It was a cheeseburger match. Then we have Braun Strowman taking on Sami Zayn, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Cesaro. Uh, Sami, so they're now known as the Artist Collective. Wow, this is a. Sammy, Sammy in this outfit actually looks like Popeye. It's kind of funny. 
Uh, this match really didn't have to be there. Shinsuke Nakamura, for the most part, opened up the match by getting beat up. Uh, whenever Braun would be beat up, tag in, uh, Sami Zayn also would just get his cheap shots in. He would also taunt, taunt Braun. Uh, so again, that first now allows Shinsuke to deliver the Kinshasa and the vicious knees. Uh, Cesaro gets in, softens up Braun some more, allows Sami Zayn to come in, softens up some more. Once Braun shows any life, Sami's like, uh, okay, so, so someone else tag. And then Zayn. Zayn, of course. Oh, Shinsuke like, went for a sleeper hole, but then got back suplex. Zayn gets involved. Of course, he goes up to the outside. Braun Strowman shoulder tackles everyone. <laughs> Cesaro flew to the German announce table. Cesaro is so good. Uh, Zayn again. He did the distractions. And then he crawled underneath the ring, got, got pulled out. However, as Braun went underneath the ring, that's when Cesaro and Shinsuke kind of double teamed on him. Uh, Cesaro tried to do a gotcha neutralizer happening. Then eventually, Shinsuke gets in, Kinshasa's the back of the head of Braun Strowman, sends him into the ring post. Cesaro drives Braun into the ring post. Sami Zayn then tags, so Cesaro and Shinsuke have Braun Strowman up in a suplex position. Sami Zayn comes in with a haluva kick. He gets the pin because he was a legal man. Sami Zayn finally gets his first taste of WWE gold. Wow, that's a long time coming, too. And this was like the second shortest match next to, well, obviously the pre-show. And eh, probably the third shortest match because Daniel Bryan Drew Gulak was kind of short. This was also kind of short, but uh, it was okay. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have the Women's Elimination Chamber, and they announce all the participants. Asuka comes in first, Sarah Logan, Liv Morgan, Shayna Baszler. Ruby Wright and Natalia start off. And to start off, it's, it goes kind of very brawlish. They go to the outside. Natalia very quickly puts Ruby Riot into the sharpshooter. Ruby Riot powers out and, and like Natty's head like slams into a pot. Poor Natty. She's she's like gonna die. <laughs> and then Ruby Riot like climbs up the wall to like the butt bomb. From the chamber wall. I do not describe. She just climbed up and like like fell on Natalia butt first. If you know what that move's called, let me know. I call it the butt bomb. Ouch, Natty goes into this change. I wonder if those those chains do like they're rubber coated. It's not like the old way the elimination chamber was set up with all steel. I miss that because if you're gonna have an elimination chamber match, I hate the tunnel dust the roads, baby. Somebody got to bleed, though. Ruby Riot's head, forehead's too smooth and too big. There has to be at least a little nick on there. There has to be some juice on that forehead of hers if they're in a cage, baby. With that, Sarah Logan gets, gets in. Uh, she goes right after Natalia. Uh, climbs up to the pod. And and is joined by Ruby Wright of all people, and then hit like a some pop up headbutt on top of the pod. Um, by this is like oh okay they've done every pod thing they they, they could do. Uh, Logan flies off the pod onto both Natalia and Ruby Wright, and the reason why I'm calling this match as I am because I downgraded it because you could hear Natalia say tower, tower. Tower. It's like, oh, I know a spot's coming up. The Tower of Doom spot. Guess what came up then? The Tower of Doom spot. If you're going to be really predictable, you will be downgraded. That's the only thing about this one's match is that, well, a couple things. 
Then Shayna Baszler's next. She, uh, Logan gets, Scott gets caught into the Carafina clutch, the rear naked show. Logan taps out pretty quick. Then she just goes after Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot taps out to the clutch. Uh, Shane does the same thing to Natalie. Natalia taps. Yeah, and then she's just like posing in the ring forever and like, okay, this five minutes is a little long. You have to speed this up a little bit. Uh, then you don't know if it's going to be Oscar or Liv. Liv gets in next. And like, Shane just like destroys Liv. L Liv. Liv dies. Liv's just dead. And I'm like, this, this, now they just waste more time. I swear it was more than five minutes. You're like, they're sitting. Although listening to Asuka and, and have the cameraman just like zoom in on Asuka's. It's like, this cameraman has nothing else better to do than like show us a close up of, of Asuka's butt. But. Hey, whatever. I, I, I got a smile from it. So did everyone in Discord. Uh, Asuka eventually gets in. Finally uh, goes for the hip attack. Pretty good wrestling from both, although I think this match only lasted like five more minutes. Uh, Asuka tries the Asuka lock. Again, this is good. You have two submission wrestlers going for each of their submissions. Asuka goes for the Asuka lock. Uh, Shannon Baszler tries for the Carafina clutch pretty early. It's caught into a pinning predicament. Again, Asuka, they were rolling up side. Asuka gets caught in the Carafina clutch. Asuka does the face thing and passes out. So technically, she never tapped, but she passed out, though. She was put to sleep by the Carafina clutch. Shannon Baszler and, and is going to face Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. And every so often they would show pictures of Becky. And that was Elimination Chamber. Um, oh, wait, that match? Just because it was predictable, it was very plotting, and it just felt longer than it should be. Uh, they didn't do anything really amazing. Once Shannon Baser came in, she, they cleared house. Uh, it was a can of soup. So overall, I would say the Illumination Chamber was yeah, a cheeseburger show. Again, very it was a cheeseburger show. And very typical of WWE pay-per-views. What's good is really good. There's a lot of okay filler stuff. And and what's not good is meh. So, therefore, again, it earns that cheeseburger rating. Let's see how I did. I made my prediction video, so let's take a look here. Yep, so I got... I didn't know about the one match. I won't count that. The bonus was there was going to be some, some match during the pre-show. I got that. Check that. Shayna won. Taro Shinsuke and Sami Zayn won. Andrade won. Aleister Black won. Whoa. Officer Black one. The only two I got wrong. Um, I had Seth Rollins and Murphy getting, and I had the Usos get, get, getting the belt. So they lasted. They, they did pretty good. Yep, the Shinsuke, Sami Zayn, and Cesaro match was the match to sleep through. Stone Cold Lock, obviously Shana, uh, Shana winning. Andrade and Umberto probably was match of the night. I'm going to upgrade myself. I was in the head. Of one. Nah. Well, I, I, however, knew the inner workings that was passed on by one Stephanie McMahon. That was Elimination Chamber. A um, couple things about this week. Again, I'm done my opening bump, so. Oh, well, you'll, you'll see that person 
maybe a year from now we'll we'll, I'll, we'll see if there's someone new. So I'll post this up as soon as I can because I have a lot of work to do still tonight. I'm gonna have to skip all that fudge. I'll figure out something. You need that aluminum though. Definitely from there. So this will be posted a little bit later. You know, it was daily saving time, so, so my internal clock's still kind of wonky. Monday night, going to be doing Monday Night Raw. Tuesday, I cannot do my show, cannot do my Impact show because I'm working. Wednesday, I'll be doing a double show. Just a double show because I can't do the triple show because I have to work Wednesday during the day. I'll be doing AEW and NWA Wednesday. Tuesday, Bob. Friday is going to be smacked on. And then Saturday, you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, here in the Daytona Beach Multicultural Center. I'll be there for NXT. I plan to get my tickets 6.30. Even though they say it's an 8.30 start, that sounds off. It generally starts at 7.30 and ends a little bit before 10. So they're not going to go that long. No, it's a Saturday. So I'll so you'll be able to see this guy there. Probably about seven o'clock I'll be waiting in line, even though they do have the no touching rule. If you want to shake my hand, I will gladly shake your hand. Again, if you shake my hand, you'll also get a chance to do a shout out to on my YouTube page. That sounds pretty cool. Again, that'll be Saturday night. I'll post that video as soon as I can. And then the following week, darn, I can't watch Red Reyes. That's okay. I didn't miss that. So everyone else have a very good night. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. Bye, folks.